This was the finished form I built for the first capsule design, which had fins on it, on the capsule itself, as you can see here. And um, I later went with a finless capsule design, but here now you can see an animation that was going to um, represent how my flight would go. And originally, you see, I had the rocket motor up in the nose of the capsule, and this was a pull rocket instead of a push rocket. I was using the pendulum effect where the mass was below the thrust. I later went back to a conventional design. See that ball would keep me stable until I reached a lower point in the atmosphere where I could deploy the drogue chute and then that would deploy a ram air canopy and I would come in and land just like a skydiver does. And I always like building my little models. Kind of like a Soviet SS missile, you know, they drive them around on a truck, they park, they deploy and they launch. So that would that was gonna be it. Now to start making a mold, you make a form, which becomes a plug. So this is the initial form. Then that gets covered with fiberglass, which makes it very rough as you can see. Then the fiberglass gets covered with lots and lots of body filler, you know, Bondo. Um, oh, God, I don't even, can't even remember how many gallons I went through doing this one. And then you just work on refining the shape. Now you can see here, um, I have it mounted on this, like a rotisserie. And I can rotate it. Um, against a, um, a screed, you see here. So the motor turns it. I add Bondo, remove Bondo. Now this is the mold for the back section. And those little indentations you see are for six 130-pound um, thrust rocket motors. That represented the seal for the back. Now you can see here I've got the thing rotating. And you can see how beautifully perfect this is because that gap remains absolutely constant the whole way. Now it's even been further refined. The surface is really getting nice now. And I've changed the window design, so I have to still modify the other side. You notice the difference between the two. Then comes time for the gel coat. Gel coat is a polyester coat, very tough, that you um, spray on the surface of your plug. And it can be sanded and, and polished and buffed to a... a glass-like finish, which is what you want in order for that mold to pop off nice and easy. So there's the finished mold, and now you can see the finished plugs. And there's um, eight little 75-pound thrust rocket motors in the nose pointing outward to stabilize it. Eight, eight attitude reaction motors go in the nose. And there's the finished mold. It separates uh, in several places to be able to get it out. And here's the finished original prototype. Now, this was a prototype from the first set of molds, which I haven't shown yet. That's why there's still fins on it. But this is the prototype I finished out as nicely as I could. It 
fit together perfectly and those two parts the yellow rings because they were molded together i didn't even need a, any kind of gasket in there that's just how perfectly snug and tight that fit was yeah it was you now right now i've got these things on wheels and, and a little air cylinder open and close it but those things wouldn't be on there on the real capsule the one that was going to go and you can see the seat and the interior with the nice little dashboard now if you saw the movie 2001 space odyssey you'll recognize this fellow that's my hal 9000 computer terminal just a joke obviously i had no hal 9000 i had a a laptop but that was my control stick for manual control you notice that that window is recessed there was going to be an, a secondary window to fit in the black in that little sill um, to keep the contour of the capsule perfect. So it was a double window. Yep, getting ready for launch. Kinda. Yep, so there's the throttle. Some other switches. So that was the capsules, capsule design.